Long-term holders control the Bitcoin market. There's no doubt about that. They own the majority of the supply and their behaviour often signals exactly where we are in the cycle before the price even reacts. So in this video, we're going to break down exactly what the long-term holders are doing, what the key metrics are telling us, and why the actions could be the single biggest clue to where Bitcoin goes next. So let's dive in. Now, let's talk about one of the most powerful forces behind Bitcoin's price over the long term, which is the behaviour of long-term holders. Now, long-term holders are arguably the most important group in this entire market. They control the majority of the available supply, and by extension, the market's liquidity dynamics. Out of the almost 20 million Bitcoin in existence, around 15 million of them are being held by long-term holders. That leaves just 5 million coins in the hands of short-term holders, which are the most reactive and price-sensitive cohort of the market. And just to recap for those unaware, Bitcoin transitions from being held by a short-term holder to a long-term holder at the 155-day point. And that threshold isn't arbitrary, it's backed by lots of data. Once a coin passes that 155-day window, the statistical likelihood of them being spent or moved drops off a cliff. Or in other words, the longer a coin remains dormant, the less likely it is to re-enter circulation, which makes these long-term holders the true supply anchors of the Bitcoin economy. Now, long-term holders are often referred to as the smart money, and it's not just a flattering nickname, there's some measurable truth to it. They are the entities that typically accumulate during the deep bear markets and distribute their holdings into euphoria at the cycle tops. They behave counter to the crowd, which is exactly why their moves are so important to monitor. And if you go back and look at previous cycles, this pattern becomes crystal clear. During the 2017 peak, for example, long-term holders, which are shown in green, distributed a significant portion of their coins into the rally, enough that the total supply held by long-term holders and short-term holders actually reached parity. It was a clean 50-50 split right at the top. And in 2021, the dynamic repeated itself, but to a slightly lesser degree. The long-term holder supply dropped to around 61% in this case, as they distributed coins to new market entrants, who quickly became the next wave of short-term holders. Now, in this current cycle, we've seen something quite interesting. There's actually been two major distribution events from long-term holders. The first came during the post-ETF rally, when Bitcoin approached the $70,000 region and the second occurred around the initial rally to $100,000. Both of those periods saw more than a million coins flow from long-term holders to short-term holders, and that's a massive rotation of supply. So, if history was to rhyme, and we saw another major push to the upside from here, I'd expect to see a similar dynamic, which would be maybe another four hundred to 500,000 Bitcoin redistributed into the hands of short-term participants. But here's the key point. That kind of redistribution doesn't happen unless prices rise enough to entice those long-term holders to part with their coins. And personally, I don't think the current 75% long-term holder supply level marks the peak of this cycle. In my view, it seems way too early, even with more and more people choosing to hold on to their coins for the long term. What this really means is I believe there's still room for long-term holder dominance to fall before another major supply transfer begins. Now, one of the best ways to visualise these movements in real time is through the long-term holder 30-day net position change chart. Now, this indicator tracks how many coins long-term holders are adding or removing from their wallets each day, aggregated over a rolling 30-day window. And when the value is positive, long-term holders are accumulating, absorbing supply from the market. And when it's negative, they're distributing, releasing supply back into circulation. And when you compare this to Bitcoin's price chart, the signal is remarkably consistent. During the major rallies, when euphoria kicks in, long-term holders begin offloading their coins at an increasing rate. At the height of the previous bull run, they were distributing up to 25,000 Bitcoin per day at the peak. And that's enormous. It's equivalent to months of minor issuance being sold back into the market daily. And right now, that same metric is showing they're offloading around 6,000 Bitcoin per day. So yes, we are seeing some distribution, but it's nowhere near the scale of what we've seen during the major overheated phases of the past. And that's an important distinction. It means that while long-term holders are realising some profits, which is normal after large moves up in price, the overall selling pressure isn't yet the kind of level 
that historically has marked previous cycle tops. And that's partly why Bitcoin's price action feels somewhat suppressed, for a want of a better word, at the moment. Because despite massive institutional inflows from the ETFs and the Bitcoin treasury companies, the constant trickle of long-term holder distribution has effectively absorbed that demand. In fact, if you look at the numbers, the long-term holder distribution has been roughly five times greater than the most recent ETF inflows, and that's a staggering imbalance. But there's a nuanced point here worth mentioning. Some long-term holders may actually be rotating their holdings from self-custody into ETFs. In this case, they're selling their spot Bitcoin to repurchase the exposure through institutional vehicles, either for security reasons, convenience, or just a tax-related efficiency. So, in some cases, not all of this distribution represents selling out of Bitcoin entirely. It could simply be a migration of coins between storage models. But regardless of the reason, it still introduces short-term supply back into the market. And of course, there's always what we call the lifestyle chip effect, when older holders who've been sitting on enormous unrealized gains finally decide to cash out a small portion to fund something in the real world. After all, if you bought Bitcoin about 10 years ago for a few hundred dollars, it does make sense to take a slice off the table when the price is in six figures plus. But the key takeaway here is that monitoring this 30-day net position change provides a real direct window into the conviction and behavior of Bitcoin's strongest hands, and by extension, it acts as one of the best trading signals in the entire on-chain toolkit. Now, let's quickly talk about the HODL momentum, which is another crucial on-chain indicator that gives us a sense of market maturity and speculative intensity. This metric tracks the ratio of short-term holder activity relative to long-term holder stability, effectively showing the velocity of coins re-entering circulation. When the HODL momentum rises sharply, it means older coins are starting to move again, a sign of overheating, building, and profit-taking behaviour increasing. And historically, when this metric crosses above 80, it's marked both local and macro peaks, and it's one of those simple yet incredibly telling tools. But currently, we're sitting at around 68, which is elevated but not extreme. And what's more interesting to me right now is the structure. Momentum has been choppy since about June, and we haven't seen that vertical acceleration that usually accompanies a local blow-off top. And in previous cycles, when the HODL momentum spiked rapidly, it reflected that classic fear of missing out phase, where coins are flying between wallets as traders just rush to participate. But the absence of that kind of acceleration this time tells me that we might be in a transition phase, either a slow bleed, which I talked about in the previous video, where momentum gradually cools, or we're simply coiling up for another leg higher. But purely from a structural standpoint, this looks like a classic inflection point, the type of setup that often precedes a major breakout or breakdown. But the direction of that will ultimately depend on whether the long-term holders continue distributing or start absorbing the supply again. But here's a positive spin for you. Bitcoin is trading at near its all-time high. But despite that, the underlying on-chain metrics don't show the kind of speculative overheating we typically see at true cycle tops. And that means that if we do get another major breakout, there's now plenty more room to run before things start getting unsustainable. Now, let's move on to one of my favourite tools for understanding this dynamic in a more continuous momentum-based way, which is the long-term holder coin flow indicator. Now, this one quantifies long-term holder coin movement to reveal the underlying demand and distribution dynamics in Bitcoin supply. It uses Glassnode's one-year active supply data to track the portion of coins that have remained inactive for over a year, essentially estimating how much of the network has been held by long-term participants. The indicator essentially compares the daily changes in total supply against the shift in that inactive cohort, calculating what we call an apparent demand, or, in other words, whether coins are being absorbed by long-term holders or released back into the market. The output is then inverted, smoothed with a 50-day EMA, and then scaled to create a continuous oscillator. The positive values showing green indicate net distribution, meaning coins are flowing back into a more liquid market, while negative values shown in red signal net accumulation, meaning long-term holders are soaking up all of the supply. And this just gives us a clear visualisation of long-term holder demand pressure, basically an on-chain version of an accumulation versus distribution oscillator that you'd see in traditional volume analysis. 
Now, this is where I find this indicator becomes most interesting. It doubles down as a remarkably effective DCA, or dollar cost averaging tool. Anytime the coin flow is red, which is most of the time, it implies that long-term holders are absorbing the supply. And that's generally a great environment to DCA. You're buying into structural weakness when the strongest hands are doing the same. And when the indicator flips green, it means that some of those long-term holders are distributing into strength. And again, that's usually when you want to ease off the gas a bit, or maybe slow down or pause your DCA. You can even make this dynamic, adjusting your DCA size depending on how deep the signal is in the red. The deeper it goes, the heavier you DCA. And this approach ensures that you're not trying to time the market to perfection. You're aligning with your buying strategy, with the behaviour of the most reliable participants in the system. But at the moment, the indicator is slightly in positive territory, meaning long-term holders on balance are distributing. But the reading isn't extreme, it's relatively flat. And that suggests that modest profit-taking has taken place, rather than full-scale euphoria. So, from a practical standpoint, in my opinion, that probably calls for a lighter DCA, or even a temporary pause, depending on your conviction and time horizon. But what we can really say from all of this is that long-term holders remain the foundation of Bitcoin's entire market structure. They dictate the liquidity, drive supply cycles, and ultimately shape the broader macro rhythm of every bull and bear market. Their accumulation creates flaws, their distribution defines the tops, and everything in between. The volatility, the consolidations, the fake-outs, it all tends to revolve around how this cohort behaves. And remember, in Bitcoin, price is just the surface. The real story, and the one that drives every single move, starts with these long-term holders. So, to wrap things up, the long-term holders are still steering this market more than ever before but they're not acting like we've hit a true cycle top yet. The net position change shows steady distribution at around 6,000 Bitcoin per day, which is far from the aggressive 25,000 we saw at major past peaks. It's a controlled release, keeping prices from running too hot. And the HODL momentum metric backs this up, sitting near 68, which is elevated but not overheated. It signals that the market's coiling rather than peaking, suggesting there's still potential energy building beneath the surface. And finally, the long-term holder coin flow shows that long-term holders are lightly distributing, but not accumulating. So it's not a time to go heavy on the DCA, but more of a face to stay patient and let the market show its hand. So overall, the story here is one of restraint and positioning. We're in this middle ground, not overheated, but not cheap, where long-term holders are quietly adjusting and the market's tension is building. And if momentum flips, the next move could certainly be powerful. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live. Built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on-chain insights. It's available now through the link in the description where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.